Hi everybody, Joe here from Show to Speak Photography. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how to take great nighttime photos with your DJI or really any brand drone. Now, I fly with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro, which arguably has probably the best image sensor of any consumer-based drone uh, camera. But truth of the matter is, by about ISO 1600 or so, the images just start to fall apart. So while these drones take fantastic pictures during the day, great pictures at sunset, once things go to dark, once the sun goes down, uh, the image quality just falls apart. Again, by ISO 1600, we're looking at almost uh, unusable images due to the image sensor noise. So I'd like to take you through a workflow that's going to correct that and let you get phenomenal images um, despite the noise that's created by these sensors, how to compensate for it, and I'm going to show you the tools that I use and how you can get incredible images that are really going to up your game. So if you just take a look at this image I'm about to show you here, and you can see the, the image sensor noise in this photo, we're going to take it from here to here. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm in Lightroom. I use Adobe Lightroom to um, categorize and store all of my images, and I also do a lot of my basic workflow in Adobe Lightroom. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your images now. Just to backtrack a second, what I did here was I shot just after sunset a series of three bracketed raw images on my DJI Mavic 2 Pro drone. Why did I shoot bracketed? Uh, what is bracketed? Bracketed is uh, photos that you would take for an HDR workflow. Okay, what that means is because the image sensor really can't detect very well the differences between highlights and shadows in challenging situations, uh, the HDR workflow takes underexposed photos, a regular photo and an overexposed photo to compensate in the differences in the brights and darks of an image that's a very high contrast situation. So straight up daylight, you don't need HDR. It's not going to do you any benefit. But situation like this, uh, where it was just after sunset, the street lights are on, um, we have some shadow areas, we have some highlight areas, the HDR is going to help us out somewhat. So using the DJI software, I took a bracketed set of three. On the screen now is the zero EV photo. What that means is this is the photo normally exposed by the camera. Okay. The next thing the camera did was it took an underexposed image. So it's underexposed by negative seven tenths of a stop. So a little bit more than a half stop. Not a tremendous amount, really. I could have probably went more, but that's fine. And then overexposed by seven tenths of a stop. Uh, and you'll see that that picks up these shadow areas over here that we didn't have in the other images. Okay, so we're overexposing to pick up detail in the shadows. We're underexposing to try and protect these highlights over here at the train station. Okay, and then here's our normal baseline, which we're going to use um, as the comparison for the other two images. The HDR software is going to take the best parts of all three of these images and combine them into one. Okay, and it's going to do that for us automatically. Just have to make a couple of small choices. Um, if you don't have HDR software, that's okay. I use Aurora HDR. I find it to be, bar none, the best uh, software out there. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Okay, but you could do this in Photoshop. You could do this in Lightroom. Um, I'm going to use Aurora because that's how I like to work. So. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into develop and make sure lens correction is on and it is for all three of these images. If not, you would just go here to lens profile and pick your drone and uh, that just creates a uh, correction and distortion. You see how it, it straightens the image and corrects a little bit of distortion at the end, the edges of the image. So just select all three of these and right click and we are going to export. Uh, a copy with Lightroom adjustments. 
to Aurora HDR. Now I'm doing a copy with Lightroom adjustments because lens correction is on. So we have made changes to these images. So let's go ahead and edit that copy with Lightroom adjustments. And Aurora HDR opens up for us. And you see it has the negative seven, uh, the underexposed, the zero, and then the plus seven, um, 0 0.7, okay? We're gonna use auto alignment because these we shot in a drone in the air. There's definitely gonna be some slight movement in these images. So let's let the software auto align these images so we have a perfect image. We're gonna turn ghost reduction on for sure. And we're gonna re remove chromatic aberration. Now ghost reduction, what that does is it's gonna look at, and it's telling us here, it's gonna use the zero, so the normally exposed photo. It's gonna use, and we could choose which one we wanted. It's gonna look at that image, and it's gonna say, hey, anything that I think might be moving, like a car, I'm gonna use the zero EV as my baseline to reduce the blur factor in these three images. Uh, because again, you gotta remember, we took three images in a row. If there was a moving car, that car would have moved in all three of those images slightly. Okay, so it's gonna look at the zero EV, use that as the baseline and use the image from that photo for any moving objects that it finds. So now we all, all we have to do is create HDR by hitting that button and away we go. Okay, the AI takes a look at what type of scene it is and it's going to combine the best parts of all three of those images for us into one photo and there it is okay now right off the bat it's pretty good we could probably use it just like this um, there are a bunch of looks that you could use uh, from aurora by clicking this button right here uh, these are like baselines to get you started like let's say we went to uh architecture this uh, cityscape let's see what cityscape looks like i mean you know it's all right i mean i might want to dial it back and they do give you that option to dial back any changes that you make. Um, it's actually not bad, I kind of like that. Um, you know, here's one here for aerial photography as well. Again, same thing, want to dial it back though. Actually, I kind of like, <laughs> I kind of liked it when it di got dialed back to zero. It's kind of funny, um, let's see. I like that change there and that's not bad all right so let's let's take that at, at, at 19 so we're going to take aerial photography at 19 percent okay now the nice thing that i like about uh or we're going to apply that and actually what that's going to do now is it's going to bounce us back into lightroom but the thing i like about aurora is we do have layers so we could continue to build layer after layer in a non-destructive way onto this image to uh change different aspects of it that um, weren't maybe the way we wanted them to be. So it gives us a lot of uh, ability to adjust our flow. Okay, but for the purposes of this video, we're gonna just bounce it right back to Lightroom. And now what I wanna do is, I'm gonna bring this into Photoshop. And the reason I'm gonna bring this into Photoshop is because I want a non-destructive workflow. We could do this in Lightroom, but every time I apply a filter going forward now, it would be a destructive a flow so by me bringing this into Photoshop I can create a non-destructive life uh, workflow but if you didn't like working in Photoshop or you're a little bit intimidated by it that's okay you can do this all in Lightroom but I'm gonna then take this now and I'm gonna say open as a smart object in Photoshop and that should bring us over here to Photoshop and here we are okay close out that other one Oops, close this out. Nope. Okay, now let's fit the screen here. Okay, now here we have uh, the image that Aurora created for us that got bounced back into Lightroom. We've opened it as a smart object in Photoshop, and here it is. So the first thing that I want to work on is getting rid of this sensor noise. Um, as, ooh, that's a little too close. As I mentioned, ISO 1600, these images were shot at ISO 1600 with the Mavic 2 and there's just way too much sensor noise here. It's just not a usable image in my opinion, but we can fix this. Okay, so 
first thing I'm going to do is create a copy of this layer. I press Control J, and I'm going to name this Noise. Okay, and I'm going to go to Filter, and I'm going to use Topaz Labs Denoise AI. Now, Topaz Labs Denoise AI works phenomenally. Uh, they're always updating it, as you can see. There's an update available right now. For the sake of this video, we'll skip it. Okay, but they're always adding updates to it, which just makes it better and better uh, all the time. It can be a little hit or miss sometimes. Sometimes it misses the mark, and sometimes it just crushes it. And we're going to hope that it crushes it here. So let's do auto detect. And a lot of times auto detect just nails it. And look at that. I mean, right off the bat, look at the difference there. I mean, it just cleaned up everything. Look at the street. It looks perfect. Um, we could bounce around this image a little bit. Let's look at that parking lot. See how that came out. Look at the parking lot. I mean, absolutely perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, I'm happy with this just the way it is. Let's spot check a few more areas, though. Let's look at this fire department building. Ah, fantastic. Let's look at the train station. And, okay. Doesn't look like the AI wants to build a preview. There it goes. And again, uh, it just does a really, really super good job. So let's go ahead and apply this. I'm happy with this. Look at the cars down below there. Uh, the, the markings in the road at the, at the rail track. I mean, it just looks fantastic. Uh, Topaz Denoise AI um, just really cleaned this up fantastically. So, okay, so now we're back in uh, Photoshop and let's just take a quick look at the before and after. That was the before. See the sensor noise there? Look at that. And now look at the after. Look at that. Look at the, sh the noise in here, uh, in these buildings in this area, even on the street. Look how the street gets cleared up, these buildings. Absolutely perfect. Um, the next thing I want to do is add some sharpening. And since denoise worked so well for me, I, I have two go to sharpeners that I love. Um, I love the Topaz Sharpen AI. And I am also a big fan of the Nick Collection, the Output Sharpener. So let's take a look at both and see which one works better. So let's duplicate this layer. Okay. And, you know, no, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to delete this layer. And we're going to do a Control Alt Shift E and create a stamped layer. Okay. So now we have a layer with our noise adjustments. Now let's we'll call this Sharpen. Okay, so now we have the ability to go back if we wanted to change uh, anything with the noise settings. Okay, and our shopping settings will keep them independent. Okay, so let's go over here to Filter, and let's go back to Topaz Labs, and let's look at Sharpen AI. And let's create the preview. And... Let's see the original and the after. There's not a tremendous amount of difference here because this image actually is pretty sharp uh, as a result of the build out when we did the HDR as is. So there's not a lot that's going on here. Um, I do see a little bit of sharpness. Let's take a look over at the uh, fire department building here. We see some lettering there. So before and the after. Do see some artifacts coming in here a little bit from the, the noise. So let's click on suppress noise a little bit, bring that up. And uh, that's not really doing so much for us there. All right, so you know what? Let's hit auto and see how the auto does with sharpening. And again, that's, that's not bad. So let's look at the original. Let's look over here. Just not a tremendous amount of difference, but again, the image is pretty sharp, so. All right, so I'm gonna hit apply and we're gonna accept this. And then we'll just run through the Nick output sharpener as well, and we'll see how that does. We'll compare the two and we'll make a choice. 
Um, again, in the description, I'll leave a link to the Topaz uh, product for you as well, as well as the Aurora product. So you can take a look at those. Okay, so here's the before, uh, here's the after, here's the before, here's the after. Not really seeing much of a difference here. So let's create another stamp layer. Control Alt Shift and E. Okay, so let's name this Sharpen Topaz. And now let's name this Sharpen Nick. So let's run the output sharpener on this. So filter. Oops. Uh, okay, Nick Collection and output sharpener. And let's see how this does for us. I uh, will do the update later. Okay. And now let's just take a look. See at the preview box down below the before and the after wherever I move my mouse. And not doing a bad job. But it may actually be introducing more noise than it's worth. So let's go ahead and we'll apply it and we'll see how that does. Okay, so let's take a look at the Okay, so that was our before, and that is our after. So before, after. That just brings in too much noise for my taste. Let's look at Topaz again. Topaz is so subtle, I almost don't see any difference. But I really don't think that we could probably get this image much sharper than that. So I'm going to say... I'm going to choose the limited amount of sharpening that, that the Topaz has applied and I'm going to accept that as the finished product here and so once we're done, I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these two layers from Nick if I can, there we go and I'm just going to hit the X here we'll say yes to saving our changes and that's going to bring us back into Adobe Lightroom and from there we can just apply any other tonal adjustments that we want, might want and aside from that I'd say uh, at that point I'd call it pretty much a, a finished product. Uh, it's almost done saving and once it is like I said we should see the changes reflected back in Lightroom and there we are let's get back over to Lightroom okay and now, just so you know, I have mine set uh, to save PSD, so we do have a PSD file now. Um, I do that because if I want to go back into Photoshop and make changes, I can. But yours might come back out as a TIFF file if you have uh, Lightroom set to save TIFF files. Okay, it's just a preference, so you'll see mine is now a PSD. Uh, we can now go over here into Develop and just take a look at, again, some of the basic adjustments. Uh, if we wanted to add a little bit of clarity, maybe bring up uh, a little bit of vibrance, not even necessary really. Uh, we can look at uh, our HSL panel, uh, maybe take a look at these greens a little bit and just darken those out a little bit. Look a little bit too green for my tastes. So that might look a little bit more realistic. Uh, but aside from that, I mean, I think it looks pretty good. Maybe a little uh, vignetting there to pull focus into the center. Uh, that's not bad, like that. Okay, and at that point, I'd say we have a finished image. So, um, I hope you like this video. Um, I think the results are pretty dramatic. Again, uh, let's take a look. So we went from here that level of noise to here with a almost pristine image that looks like it was shot practically at ISO 100. Um, 
So I think it came out really well, and I hope that this workflow can help you with your nighttime photography um, using your drone. If you found this video to be helpful, since my channel is kind of a new channel, uh, maybe you could help me out by hitting the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you get notified of new updates as they come out on this channel. That would help me out quite a bit. And take a look down in the description for any of the uh, links to any of these products that we've used. And other than that, I, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.